If it's midweek, you know it's understanding politics. Welcome to Professor Harmon Munyora's channel. My name is Jadel Kabeo here with Professor Harmon Munyora. Professor, how has this day started for you? Well, it's good, mm. bright. Mm. The cold is easing away now. Mm. And your yeah. suit is looking good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Professor, did you see uh, the, the story on Harun, I, uh, Harun Ayed? Uh, Ayed who, 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 who was deported. Yes. Uh, I don't know what you made of it. Well, I just don't like our leaders. Mm. They are doing things that is shaming this country. Mm. Both sides, both the Ruto and the Huru, mm. they should put their act together. Mm. Did you think for the government they should have done it better? Mm. If there's a problem, table it. Let Kenyans know what the problem is. What do you think about Ruto saying that he's apologizing for him on behalf that, of the that, state? That, that's comical. Mm. It's the kind of I don't want to use that word, but is 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 what I'm talking about shaming us. How how you are apologizing and, and yet you are criticizing. Mm. Within your apology, there's the criticism of the same. Oh. What kind of what kind of stuff is that from a deputy president of a country? So all this is just shameful. Yeah, and for the president, for the deputy president, mm. why do you want to associate yourself with shadow figures? Mm. You so, are carrying the name and the dignity of the country with you. Oh. Yeah, you can leave small boys like Nasudi mm. to handle those kind of things for you. Mm. But for now, it's just. Yeah, by the time you enter the scene. If it's a business, it is something you can check on, on the website of the company. Is that somebody you can associate with? Mm. You can trace him to Turkey. He has a company in Turkey. He has everything. Mm. At that time, you can now deal with him openly. Oh. Meantime, let boys do, deal with him. So this is just sad yeah. for the country. Okay, when we come back, let's take a look at some of the things he said over Professor Harman Menyore's analysis for last week. He said UDA MPs may not run and also spoke about lessons that Ruto probably learned uh, from the second president of this country, Tidanel Teretich Arab Moy. The Diaspora Times e-print paper is a sure way to reach the diaspora. You can advertise and interact with those in the diaspora. We partner with major real estate companies like Optivan, Certified Homes and the giant Centum Real Estate Company. Get ahead with the Diaspora News. You can read the Diaspora Times every single Friday. For more information, call 404-966-8550. Okay, Professor, here is Evans Aruanda. He says the UDA brigades took President Uhuru's silence for granted, not knowing the silence is the most dangerous weapon that even the devil its, itself fears. We're here watching Kipole Pole. He said they may not run. Is something being plotted in the background? You know, if I was root, I'd be very scared. Mm. This is Uhuru's silence. Mm. It should scare anybody. It seems not to bother with what you are doing. Mm. That is very scared. I agree with Evans. We should be it's very scared. It Everybody should, should, should be very afraid. Should be concerned. Ruth will be very afraid. Should be very afraid. Who doesn't seem to be caring? He might come back and say something or do something. But like remember, I've also said he could come back and everybody will go under the, under, under the bed. Mm. Yeah. And that's, that, that's what Ruto should be scared yeah. of. Okay, Evans Owino says, expeditiously, as common Mwananchi, as common Mwananchi, we've been left hopelessly watching politicians break the law abundantly. He's speaking about the UDA moves. Uh, they're still in Jubilee. They're still uh, in UDA now. Would you say this is breaking the law? Of course it's breaking the law. And it is bad. It is immoral even. Mm. It is theft of public uh, resources, mm. to earning salary illegally. Mm. Uh, it is uh, in violation of Chapter 6 of the Constitution, of Article 10 of the same Constitution, mm. and it's outright bad manners. Mm. And uh, we want to clean our politics mm. so that we do politics that is uh, dignified. Oh, yeah. Here, here is Kennedy Otieni says, even in uh, Tehran, I think it's Iran, uh, they disqualified several presidential aspirants, including the headliner Ahmed uh, Jad. The ball is in Chebukati's court. You know, in Iran, there were about 500 presidential candidates, yeah. and they, they were just looking for meet gritties to disqualify yeah. them. Would you say this is what would happen? We now? must get there. You know, I understand about 12, 12, 2013, mm. and that's why our chapter 6 got stuck. Because if it was applied, then Uhuru and the Ruto would not have run. Mm. That was where the danger was. Oh. You could have even have caused chaos. Mm -hmm. But since we have crossed that line, we must apply this chapter, at least not on Ruto. Mm. Because if we do it on Ruto, we could get ourselves into problems. Mm. But anybody else, mm -hmm. you know you must admit some things, you can't do them oh. at particular time. Because there will be consequences. Mm -hmm. So for Ruto, let's ignore whether he has 
Oh, let the ch chapter 6 or not. Now, now when yes. you spoke also about misbehavior of these leaders, Daniel Omose says, but who do cross to support ODM aspirant in Msambweni? Anwe Guru and some Jubilee MPs campaign for ODM aspirant in Kibera. You are, you, you, you are cheering, he says it. Uh, the, the people are cheering. Why are you complaining now, Prof? Does the law cut across or one, uh, or, or one function, on one function only? You know, there are certain complications we must deal with. Mm. And that's why I'm saying we must start somewhere. Mm. And in starting somewhere, we must do that which we can, we can manage to do. Oh. You see? Yeah. Even as a, as a parent, when you discipline your children, yeah. you must do so to get benefit out of it. Oh. And if you issue threats, mm. it must be about things over which you can do something. Mm. There will be nothing wrong with us starting law mm. as we move forward. Oh. Uh, although at the same time, I do not know that Uhuru has supported another candidate. Mm. Yeah, I have not seen it. It's, it's, but the Jubilee Party has. I, ha I have not seen him uh. go to Msambwena and tell people we are voting for uh. so and so. Uh. What I have seen Jubilee do, and by saying the, pre the, the president, mm. he has said, because we are working with Raila, there are certain places we would not fill candidates. Uh. And they have not filled. Mm. ODM has done the same. Mm. Uh, whether that amounts to supporting the candidates, I don't know. But it actually does <laughs> somehow. Yeah. Here's Robert yes. Chepkoki says, so far UDA is a national party and it's well organized. So uh, they can't do anything to UDA. It's a national party. Would you say that? UDA is now a national party, uh, a mm. strong party, I must mm. admit. Mm. But that doesn't, that doesn't mean mm. those who are joining it should be allowed to violate the law mm. blatantly. Mm. You know, there you can also break the law, but in a subtle manner. Uh. In a way that doesn't quite offend but when you parade yourself, a hundred of you, mm. and your chest forward, mm. mutadu, mm. that is not, we can't allow that. Oh. No. So, uh, here is Gilb, Gilb says, now, Professor, you're letting the cat out of the bag, let them be caught off guard. You're advising Ruto no, now. I'm advising them because, <laughs> uh. you know, and when I said that they could be, they could find first headwinds next year mm. when they come to clearance, you wait and see. I am sure IBC and ESCC, mm. this time round, they will have teeth. Mm. I'm sure it was Uhuru and Ruto mm. who made IBC clear all manner of people. Mm. This time round, uh. you, people will be crying at the Master Towers. Okay, Professor also made this video. He spoke about lessons from more Ruto's rising star. Uh, Gadura Kim says, Ruto does not need to learn anything from Moi. Moi was number one coward during his time as a DP. Would you say cowardice plays a big role when it comes to politics, the perception of cowardice? It depends on what you call cowardice. But uh, I think Moi just simply became was loyal, as indeed a DP should be or a vice president. Mm. He kept low profile. Mm. He never wanted to show that he has a, just those, one of those laws of, uh, uh, for, uh, from the 48 laws of power. Just mm. one, don't show your boss. Don't show your abilities. Oh. That's what Moy was doing. Mm. And, uh, and I think that's what Ruto has failed to do. Mm. But Moy learned how to use money effectively. Uh. Effectively. Uh. And he was able to rule for 24 years. Mm. And the Ruto has learned that from Moy. And he knows the power of money, especially in a country where people worship money, like Kenya. And it's a plus for him. Yes. Uh, Ezekiel Lim That's what I was saying. Libamira says, Thank you, Professor. The things that William Samoy Ruto has totally failed to learn from Daniel Arap Moe is patience. Secondly, Moe never fought the system, and that will be Ruto's undoing. How true is that? It is true. Mm. You know, if Moe had attempted... Jeremongi did it. Mm. How far did he go? Mm. He thought he could fight Kenyatta. Uh. Ah, you couldn't. You can't fight the system. You can't fight this. Nobody can fight the system. Uh, you know, I laugh. And I've told you there's a book of mine I'm writing. Yeah. Actually, it's true. Uh, when people say the system cannot vote for somebody, mm. and they, they cite 2002, uh, you know what they say? Uh, if the system has power, has power uh, why didn't Moi give Ruto? Uh, uh, Uhuru. Uhuru. That is a joke. That was, this is a script I've said before. Why would you say it didn't? This was a script. It was planned. Yeah, it was to process Uhuru to be ready for president. Testing the water. In the meantime, give Kibachi a Shikilia caretaker president. Uh, and that, I'm born out, the facts mm. are, this, this is born out by the fact that mm. in his second term specifically, mm. Kibachi wasn't quite in control. Uh. The Uhurus who are running this country. Sometimes I just think, I just let some of the things you say slide. No, 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 you cannot be certain. Take me to task. No, take me to task. Take me to task. You cannot be certain though. It, you, of course, you can't be certain, be certain because it's not scientific. Yeah, <laughs> okay. If it was scientific, yes. Yeah. Here's Professor Dr. Savagi 
Guka I'm finishing with him he says Professor Majnora we chunga sana haya maneno ya kutukuza William Ruto kwa channel yako ya Kome Raila Amolo Odinga is president in 2022 okay <laughs> the, you know some people usually say that you're supporting Raila you're supporting Ruto No um that's that should show how neutral I am uh, uh, Yeah I see a lot of beating from the ODM and the handshake brigade when I say Ruto if elections were held he'll win. Many people called me and told me, you, are, you don't know how to assess politics. Uh -huh. So when I say Ruto is doing badly, they're happy. Uh -huh. But now that I'm saying if elections were held, he will beat them uh -huh. today. Uh -huh. But again, I'm quick to add, we have a whole year to go. Today we have 364 days. Yeah. Yet uh -huh. one day is important in politics. And because one day can change everything. Yeah. It's like two minutes in football. Uh -huh. Yes. So because of the 364 days, let's talk about the IEBC. Are they prepared to hold elections come next uh, year, August 9? Uh, 2022. If they are, let's uh, take a look at some of the things that they need to do so that we have credible elections uh, next year. The Diaspora Times e-print paper is a sure way to reach the diaspora. You can advertise and interact with those in the diaspora. We partner with major real estate companies like Optivan, Certified Homes and the giant Centum Real Estate Company. Get ahead with the Diaspora News. You can read the Diaspora Times every single Friday. For more information, call 404-966-8550. The Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, IEBC, will need close to 41 billion Kenya shillings to hold the elections in 2022. Are they adequately prepared? And Professor, my question is, as we start, why are ex uh, elections in this country this expensive? 41 billion. This is not just expensive in Africa. It's actually expensive for the whole world to see elections that are being held at this much exp uh, expense. Last time we did some mass voter registration, some times back. Mm. One vote, to register one vote had cost us 500 shillings. Register one vote? One vote. I mean, how much money was spent, you divide the number of people who mm. registered, mm. 500 shillings per vote. Mm. Now we are told our election cost about 2,500 oh. per vote, mm. the entire election, mm. next year. Mm. This is crazy. The two reasons are we are stupid, and uh, secondly, we have problems with the trust. Mm. We have trust deficit. We can't mm. trust ourselves. Mm. We can trust the Larry, whatever they have called in Ruaraka, mm. to print our money. But we can't trust them to print a ballot paper. A ballot paper. Mm. We take it to UK. Mm. So that's what I'm calling stupidity. Mm. There are so many things that if you look at the budget of IEBC, mm. you just pity this country. But, but, but they, were, they were saying they need security. They, there are places with no network security? coverage. What there, there are better ways. Mm. What we need, for example, do is borrow like from America and elsewhere. Mm. We have election committees. From the county, you drop down to the polling station. Mm. Election committee, we know how to constitute it, mm. to, 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 uh, to, to, to take care of our mistrust, mm. to take care of our competition in terms of political parties. We sit down and think. So at, so at count level, we have a committee. Mm. Then below it, constituency, we have a committee. Mm. Then below it, at the world level, mm. and then at polling station polling center level. Oh. We have committees managing this election. Oh. These are volunteers. Mm. They are not paid by anybody. They are volunteers. Yeah, they should be volunteers. Secondly, mm. we allow busy bodies to be on the ballot paper. Mm. Sometimes a ballot paper is like an exercise book. Mm. You see that 30 people are standing for MCA. Jokers. Mm. We must get rid of jokers. Now, for example, uh. if we ask political parties, if you are a serious presidential candidate, mm. you must have an agent in every polling station. An agent. Yes. That's why in America, mm. many people stand other than the two people know. Mm. There are many other presidential candidates. Mm. But you choose which state to appear. You oh. choose where you'll be on a ballot. Because mm. there are, some of it is a waste of time. I, I saw Kanye West was like in about seven states. Yes. Uh, not everywhere because yes. they cannot afford it. Yeah. So we uh. say, okay, Manuela, you want to be president of the Republic of Kenya. We mm. shall clear you. Mm. You are over 18 years. Fine. Mm. You have sent mind. Mm. So you're going to school a bit. Fine. Okay. We have... 40 or so thousand polling stations. Mm. Each agent, we agree, is roughly a thousand shillings per day. Mm. That's what they are paid mostly. Mm -hmm. yeah. You need a minimum of two. Mm. 2,000 times 40,000. Wake up with IBC. Mm. Dr. Lipa, what? Mm. We want to make sure you have an agent mm. who is paid. Mm. For that reason, mm. you cannot claim that you didn't have an agent and 
things and they will be signing. Mm. So we reduce even the need for security. Oh. And then you add on those... Cam we, what I'm saying is, mm. to borrow from uh, Steve Ogola, mm. we must be innovative. We must innovate. Uh. We must be creative. We must think. We must care for this country. How do you throw 40 billion shillings to an election? Mm. A poor third world country. Let's talk a little bit about the credibility though. Would you say expenditure capping for these aspirants would be able to bring credibility in the elections? It can't. Because first of all, how would you monitor? Mm. We live in a country that is operating as if we are in the 18th century. This is a, this is a, I mean, we pride ourselves as a modern nation. Mm. But how can a modern nation be a country where you can buy property in cash worth 200 billion? 200 million in cash and it is registered nobody asks you how you bought it mm. look here we must be able to transact financial business mm. in a way that can be you can trust mm. even crime mm. even money laundering drugs mm. it, these are aided by the fact that this is a cash economy mm. people just use money anyhow oh. so how will you monitor so the, the but if it's a country where money was regulated in mm. terms of expenditure and use mm. so that you cannot just walk to a showroom and count 8 million shillings and walk out with a car. Oh. No. You can only do a bank transaction. And that is happening today? No. no. They, are, we, they are paying lip service to it. There's no. nothing. Apart from the 1 million rule, mm. you can't withdraw a million without questions. You can't deposit a million. Without. Apart from that, mm. everything else. If you have your money, you can use it to buy property. You can mm. go to Karen, mm. negotiate with somebody, pay him 400 million. Mm. And you go to register and they register your, 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 your property. Mm -hmm. So what would you say would improve credibility in the country? First of all, we must elections? start there. Uh. We must start by networking all systems in terms of money. Mm. So that you cannot use money without a trace. Mm. You cannot go to a bank and withdraw 50 million. Mm. Because they will ask you what you want to do. Mm. You are going to give a very useless explanation in the bank manager's office. Mm. Mm. And you will call the boys in Patia million and mm. 50 million. But so once we tighten that, mm. we make it very difficult for you to handle cash mm. in this country. Mm. Then you will be able to trace people, not just for elections, but for other, 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 other things. And then Kenya Revenue Authority, they will get a lot of revenue from that. Mm. If all transactions mm. are, are, are electronic, mm. at least, yeah. once, for example, if you, if you go to a a showroom somewhere and buy something cash like a car mm. that should trigger signals mm. KRA CID BCI uh, yeah the signal should be uh, serious fraud unit uh, Interpol everybody should get some signal red right? light uh, somebody has even Interpol yes 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 you see that kind of thing yeah well, if we have that kind of arrangement uh, like other countries do like like the US and other places uh, then it means like in Europe yeah then it means an expenditure will be Easily monitored. Okay, and how would we deal with the mistrust then? The mistrust that leads us to print ballot papers abroad and not in, in the country. I said one of the problems we are being stupid. We yeah. just have to stop being stupid. Uh. Yeah, that's all. An election is a simple issue. Uh. I keep asking. This is a phone. Mm. All my money in my bank, which I don't have, there are people with money, those with money, mm. they trust the bank to transact their money on a phone like this in a system. Mm. You trust an ATM, I wish I could get my card, yeah. I don't have it. <laughs> yeah. You trust that your money, you can access it using an, an electronic card, oh. ATM, Visa card, mm. credit card. Mm. But you, you, you find it so difficult to trust your vote electronically. Mm. How? This is what I'm calling stupidity. Yeah. But, but because by this time, because we are poor people, oh. we should be able to, now we have this uh, Huduma number, yeah. whatever it was called. Mm. You should know there should be no registration of voters. Mm. You have a number. Once you are 18, the system is aware you are 18 years and above. Mm. You should just go to your phone and vote for Mudo. Mm -hmm. So that the election should just cost us like 500 million. <laughs> because we are poor people. Mm -hmm. Why can't we do this voting electronically? Mm. Like, Why are we allowing ourselves to be stupid? Yeah. Anyway, even before we get there, mm. I have said if you look at the budget of IBC, mm. you'll see a lot of things that don't make sense. Mm. Last time, there were things like telephones mm. for relaying results. Mm. There were millions of SIM, SIM cards that were, were bought that they were never used. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. A lot of it is just stupidity. Oh. 
matter ya kuwasha usiku. Tunapika kura usiku ya nini? Yet the law allows the presiding officer to postpone an election if something happens to the following day. Oh. Let's stick to the timelines. Oh. Let's start our polling at 6. Mm. Let's close at let's close at 5. Mm. And to the extent that by law there is no polling station that, ha that has more than 700 voters. Mm. And we can even reduce, change that law and make it 400. Mm. You see, if we move maximum from 700 to 400 or 300, mm. we can count the votes in, in 10 minutes. Mm. The cost of an extra polling station may mitigate a lot of challenges. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But even as it were, what is so difficult counting 700 votes? And very few polling stations will be having 700. Mm. We have seen when the results are being relayed yeah. like, on, on the board there. Yeah. We are mepata kumi, we are mepata tamanini, we are mepata mia. They are really the average is about 200, 300 votes. So, so would you say polling station. would you say we'll be having credible elections next year, considering what? No, they are not. The credible. chair was you speaking of, of 3G network no, not in some places. Forget about it. These guys are not prepared. The servers are coming back. To These the guys are not prepared. Yeah. Look, and I'm even laughing at you, UDA, yeah. at the root one. I, I, I used to sympathize, but since they have refused my sympathy, yeah. I'm now laughing at them. Yeah. I was on some TV station yesterday, and I said, "Look here, you are in a hurry." Because you think this thing is easy for you. Mm. By June next year, you'll be crying. Mm. Do you know what IBC is procuring? Mm. What's, what technology are they procuring? How will it work? Mm. How about the hardware? They are saying some of the hardware is in Maribika. Mm. Others are obsolete. Mm. Others are here were lost when they gave some other countries. Whatever it is. Yeah. So they are procuring the hardware. Mm. Does Ruto know what is being procured? And how they are procuring? Mm. Does Raila know? So it's a matter of transparency. They don't know. What is being procured? Oh. What in terms of software? Yeah. And they don't know. Mm. How credible is the voter register? But should they really know if... They should. They are, they are, they are, they are the players. Uh. We should have a credible voter register. Okay. They should have pushed for fresh voter registration. Yeah. A, new, a new voter register. Mm. I would rather spend money on that. Because mm. that's where the problem is. Okay. And it came out in the Supreme Court. I don't know about you. Do you think we'll be having credible elections uh, come 2022, August 9th? Leave a comment if you can. But for now, let's take a look at what Professor would rather gamble with on Would You Rather. We've just spoken about IBC. Boni Halwale or Senator Hassan Omar to head IBC. Who would you rather? Uh, I, I think heading IBC. Yes. Uh, I'll go for Hassan. Hassan Omar. Omar, yeah. Why, why him? He has experience in that area. Uh. Yeah, he has in from civil society world. Mm. And uh, he's steady. Okay, MP Mbakasi East, Babu Wino, or MP Mbakasi West, Judge Deuri, to be your son's mentor. Who would you want? <laughs> the other man. The, Judge Deuri. <laughs> yeah. He's better than Babu. I don't even know him, but uh, Babu is a little erratic. He's my <laughs> friend, but... <laughs> A little erratic. A little erratic. You yeah. wouldn't want your son to be. Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay. Okay, weekly for Paranya or Wangamati to be uh, to head your son's wedding committee. <laughs> Why would they head this? Uh, this uh, Paranya is an old man. Why would they head? Uh, Did you head the committee to assist? <laughs> Who would you rather? Of course, they are all good men, uh. but I think Paranya is closer to me. I understand him better than uh. Wangamati. He's yes. a good guy. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Professor. This has been Understanding Politics. My name is Daniel Kibir here with Professor Haman Manyora. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do so. Professor, thank you so much for coming. Thank you.